proper breathing method is very easy to understand. You take your fingers and put them under your ribs in the soft part of your belly. Everybody do that. Okay, push it in. Take your tongue and just use your tongue by pushing up on your palate, tighten your stomach. Everybody feel that? Okay. Now when you do that, you tighten your, you instantly make your body hard. Your stomach gets hard, you force the diaphragm <clears throat> down. With your tongue step up against your palate, you cannot breathe. You cannot inhale or exhale. <coughs> your breathing is stopped. In order to breathe, what you do is you loosen your tongue when you need to breathe. Air rushes out between the tongue and the palate. Air rushes in through your nose to replace the air you took out, and you stick your tongue back up there and hold the stomach tight. That's the proper breathing method for sunshine. So it's so that stomach, that tongue is always stuck up against your palate, compressing your body. You need to breathe. You loosen your tongue a second. Air rushes out. Air rushes in. When you breathe like this. It's not a breath. You, you cannot separate the breathing. A breath is a continuous flow. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. The only way your body knows how much air to take in after you exhale is because it's going to replace what you exhale. When you breathe, that's up to you. You can breathe here, here, but it should be an exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, okay? You don't even have to make noise. You can loosen your palate a little more. You can rush out this way. But it's easier for many people to make that exhalation. So that's the proper breathing method. Fourth purpose, What's the fourth purpose? to train a penetrating eye. Build a strong physique, consolidate the basic stance, master the proper breathing method, train a penetrating eye. I told you, I think I've told you all this story. I would give this talk a lot, penetrating eye. You know, I, I didn't really know what I was talking about. I would say, the eye of the tiger. But I think I told you about the time that I uh, came back from Okinawa one time, and I had a black uh, lab named Shana. And uh, I used to keep her with me all the time at the dojo. And I guess while I was away in Okinawa, I think the uh, mailman tried, had to mace her or something. Because every time the mailman came, she would get pretty upset. And one time, I was sitting by the desk, and I heard that you know, little Jeep, that little four-banger that the, the mail truck drives. I'm sitting by my desk, and I hear that go around, around the other side of the dojo. The shimmer sits up. Ears like this. Okay? We know dogs really don't think they have instincts. But the instinct was, she heard the truck, she associated the truck with the male man or something. And I mean, you could see, I could look in her eyes and I could see what they mean by train a penetrating eye. I mean, it wasn't just her eye, it was ears, her whole her hair was standing up in the back of her, of her coat. So it's, it's trained all your senses of awareness. And, but the eyes are the windows to that. So that's, uh, that's the fourth purpose for sunshine training. The fifth purpose of Sanjin training is to <coughs> foster the spiritual concentration. Uh, that can mean many things, but it's uh, it's remembering that Sanjin is very serious study. It's not a time when you start thinking about things that aren't related. Uh, you know, it's not like bowling if you throw the ball down the gutter and uh, everybody laughs and you know you, you may you, maybe your team loses. But you know, you lose your concentration in karate and you could hurt somebody very seriously. You could break a nose, take out an eye, maybe cause a stroke. No time to take anything for granted in your karate training. It's the nature of the training, it's very serious business. So those, those five things make sunshine. Forget the penetrating eye, it's almost. Forget the hard body training, it's almost, but it's not sunshine. Forget the master breathing method, it's almost sunshine, but not. Lose your concentration, it's almost sunshine, but not. Not concentrating on your stance all the time, because all your problems come from your legs. It's almost sunshine, 
those five things have to be there all the time for it to be sunshine. It's like a prescription. And e they're all equal. No one has priority over the other. They all work together synergistically. So try to remember that and think about it. How many have heard that before? You'll hear it again, too. I'm pounding. Uh, first of all, it's not a competitive drill to see who has the strongest arms, who can hit the high. It is a, it's a, throw, it's a throwback to our training as it came from China. And uh, I know some of you know this because I've been through it. But Master Tamiyoshi told me that Wei Chiru is the only system that came from China with free sparring. The only system. No other martial arts system from China had free sparring. Only this system. But not from the free sparring as we see it today, we call, free, we call sports sparring. Originally, and we've been thinking about maybe introducing this again, but two people would get into this position, just like arm rubbing. Then from here, they would spar. You could not move your feet. So he'd put my hand down, he'd punch over the middle, okay, and I'd come back. You're not supposed to move your feet, okay? <laughs> but you see, this is what you're learning here. This is the introduction to it, okay? I'm feeling his weight, I'm feeling his power, we're working together, okay? This is the tool to train in close fighting. Fights don't start here with a referee, and uh, okay, they start right here. Hey, I don't like the way you're looking at me. That's how fights start. So this is the training to teach you how to fight in close. So you start off working together, feeling each other's weight, building side strength, okay? Eye contact, okay? Very important, just like if you're in, the first thing you do, if somebody grabs you by the shirt and pull you in, you make eye contact pretty quick. Okay? This is part of the training. When you get to the pounding, it's a demonstration of inside strike, outside strike, down strike. It doesn't have to be hard, just firm. It doesn't have to be <clears throat> Okay? It's all about form and technique. <coughs> One, two, I gotta watch my hand, I burned it, so. But this needs work, all of you need to work on this. Understand it. It's not a competitive drill. It's a two-person exercise, a technical drill. And I really think we need to get somehow back into this old sparring training because it is invaluable. The first thing you're going to learn is you've got to loosen your knees. Or you're like this. Okay? He's pushing you and pulling you all over. Uh, Mr. Yannamini told me one time, he said, never forget to tell your students, you must have legs like steel, knees like rubber. Knees like rubber. Because that's how you shift your weight, and that's how you, you know, you control and get your power. Uh, one other thing. Sparring will save another day. That's, that'll take us, let's talk about sparring. We'll get out of here until about 9 o'clock tonight. So we can uh, half hard, half soft. Many people have, uh, concept of that. And uh, maybe uh, about a year ago, I think I figured it out. Okay. Uh, I'm sure when they talk about it in Japanese and their language, they, they approach it differently, but the translation comes out half hard out. So. And here's how I think it is. In heart, you have some good. You have energy, you have strength, Okay, you have accuracy. But in hard, you have some bad, stiff, rigid, wasted energy. Okay? So you have some good in hard, and you have some bad in hard. In soft, you have some good. It's quick, but it's not very strong. Okay? It tends to be flicky. It's inaccurate. Okay, soft is inaccurate. So in soft, you have some good, and in soft, you have some bad. My concept of half hard and half soft is we want to take the best of the hard and the best of the soft. So we only have half of each, but the good half. That's the only thing, that's the only way half hard, half soft makes sense to me. 
So when you think about it, think of, you know, when somebody says you're too stiff, that's some of the bad heart. If you have no power, that's some of the bad soft. And if you dial in on that, you think about it yourself. What's the good part of being hard? What's the good part of being soft? And build on those blocks, I think you can answer your own questions as we go through this. Does that help anybody? I'm done. Talk too much. Sorry. Bob. Let's bow and uh, a little total of this one, please. <laughs>